The uh, Social Services Minister Scott Morrison is in Malvern in the west of Melbourne, sorry, the east of Melbourne. He's uh, with uh, Kelly O'Dwyer, a Liberal MP there this morning as well um, at a, a childcare centre and uh, we'll cross well, there, uh, we'll, we'll take a listen to, to what uh, Kelly O'Dwyer has to say and group, then the Minister Scott Morrison. The very, very special guest we have with us today, Scott Morrison, who is the Minister responsible for social services. The Malvern Special Needs Playgroup is a particularly important organisation in our local community. It's been going for more than 35 years. It's been providing care to families in the local area and in surrounding suburbs, making sure that children with special needs who either have have genetic disorders, might be on the autism spectrum, uh, who need that extra special care with physiotherapists and also with speech therapists, get that one-on-one -on -one attention. And as I said, it's been going for more than 35 years and I'm delighted that the Minister is able to be here for a very, very special announcement. Uh, I'm also particularly keen to welcome the Mayor of Stonington, Melina Sayre, who's also with us today, and the CEO of Stonington. We're here in Stonington and this is one of the important local community uh, areas that people can gather and can come together. Uh, and Meredith Biggs, uh, who is the coordinator of the Malvern Special Needs Playgroup, and all of the wonderful parents who are here, such as Kathleen and her son Austin, who were part of a forum that we ran not long ago with, Sen with Scott Morrison when he was in town to talk about childcare. So, Scott, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. It's wonderful to have you here, and we, we're very keen on the announcement. Thank you. Well, well thank you very much much Kelly it's great to be here with you here in Higgins and with all the families and, and everyone here working at the uh, Melvin Special Needs Playgroup and particularly uh, the kids. Um, it's great to be here also with Kathleen and Austin who I met uh, some weeks ago and for me really um, demonstrate uh, why we need to do what we're doing today. Uh, today we're announcing that uh, the funding for the Melbourne Special Needs Play Group will be continued at $120,000 over two years and will ensure that this important community service continues to operate here in the heart of Higgins. But not just that, today we are announcing um, the extension of funding of some $40 million uh, to around 100 organisations all around the country. Uh, not just here at Melbourne, but uh, the Bumblebee Special Play Group up in North Queensland, Karalika and the services there for drug and alcohol rehabilitation in the ACT, uh, the Men's Shed uh, in the Shoalhaven on the New South Wales Safe Coast. Hundred organisations performing very vital uh, frontline community services that have been doing so in many cases for many years. Uh, at the end of last year there was the completion of a Department of Social Services grants round. Uh, I came into the job as Minister for Social Services at that time and announced that uh, we needed to do further work on, on looking at where the gaps may have arisen on the continuation of vital uh, services in communities like the one we're in here today in Malvern. Uh, we undertook to extend the funding for those frontline services for six months, uh, three months for those involved in emergency relief. And over the last three to six months, we've been working at identifying those gaps. And I want to thank those local members all around the country who, when I offered in the parliament for them to come and see me about where they believe there might be gaps, uh, where we could work together uh, to, to fill those gaps and ensure that important and vital uh, frontline community services were able to continue. That's the process we've been involved in, whether it was Mirabel. Um, which I know has a strong support here in Victoria, and uh, Michael Danby, uh, who raised that matter with me, um, but also with Zed Zizelja in the ACT, and Gay Brotman, both sides of the political fence, coming and raising issues, uh, and we've been able to work through those over the last six months. Uh, there is still the opportunity for us to, to further identify uh, various programs that, that may need support, and uh, we will continue to work through that process. But the bottom line here is we want to support the frontline community-based social services that make a difference in the community. And here in Malvern, um, we have that on, on great display. Uh, so I want to commend everyone who's been involved with the project here over a very long period of time. And uh, we have one volunteer here today who is now getting 21st birthday invitations from the children that she was supporting all those years ago when she first began. And I think that says a lot about the community spirit and the community nature of these organisations. I particularly want to commend Kelly. Uh, she, she really took this issue to me very quickly and uh, to be able to be part of the forum some weeks ago and uh, to meet Kathleen and, and to meet Austin and to be here with them again today uh, for this good news is a, is a great thrill. So thank you to all involved. Any questions? Mr Morrison, who are the losers from this announcement? Now, there are only winners from this announcement today. Uh, there are uh, $40 million 
uh, around 100 organisations uh, based on representations made to me by local community members um, and we've gone through and been able to identify the funding through the budget process which we're able to secure in this year's budget to ensure that the frontline community service where there were clear gaps continue to be funded. So it's, it's good news. Are there more with clear gaps that you expect will need funding? Well, as I said in my, in my opening remarks, where there are other gaps uh, where we still need to work through, then we'll make those announcements in, in due course. But the, uh, the, the lion's share of those announcements um, we're making today. I should stress that earlier in the year, at the, at the end of March, uh, we made some uh, decisions in relation to ongoing arrangements for emergency relief funding. And uh, that was a similar process and, uh, and, and it was a similar outcome. Do you agree with Joe Hockey that house prices well, are simply... Why don't we just stay on the issues of the day and if we want to go to other issues we can do that, but uh, if there are any other issues on the grants process or the, or the work being done here in Melbourne, I'm sure Kelly would be happy to talk about that. She's a passionate supporter. <laughs> I'm ready for other questions, yeah, if I'm, you I'm are. I'm OK to go. Uh, OK. I'll continue with what I was. Uh, Appreciate do, your strong interest. <laughs> do you agree that Joe Hockey, uh, with Joe Hockey that house prices are simply a case of cost and demand? Well, I might ask Kelly to also comment on this as the Parliamentary Secretary to the Treasurer. But there's no doubt, and I think the Treasurer this morning again identified with the, with the difficult task that many Australians face in being able to buy their first home and, and be in the housing market, whether it's in Sydney in my home town or Kelly here in, in Melbourne in her home town or, or otherwise around the country. I mean, we have seen house prices rise in, in Sydney by, I think, around about over 14%. Uh, we've seen strong rises here in Victoria. Uh, but in the rest of the country, it's been around 2.5%. The good news is the Minister for Social Services, though, is what we've seen is a much lower increase in rents around the country. I um, mean, the the proportion of disposable income which is uh, being spent on rent is still around about 25 per cent. Uh, for those who are owning their own home paying mortgages it's around 31 and a half per cent which is uh, a bit over what is the sort of comfortable level on those issues which is said to be around 30 per cent. Once you get above 30 per cent there is a bit of stress. Uh, there is stress that is related to that and th the best way to address that I believe, is to ensure that you have a, a strong and efficient housing market where the supply can match demand. Uh, and in my home state of New South Wales, one of the things that has been occurring under the, under the New South Wales Liberal Coalition government there is they've been addressing housing supply issues. Now that's going to take some while to, to flow through into the market. Uh, but what they've done is they've put the infrastructure in place, they've released the land, they've been seeking to reform the processes. Uh, we need to build more houses in this country. That's how you address housing affordably principally for the vast majority of Australian families who are trying to buy a house. And that's what the Treasurer is talking about. Uh, the biggest impact on unaffordability of housing in Sydney uh, came from the lock-up policy of Bob Carr when he was the State Premier. I mean, he basically shut the city down on infrastructure and land release, and that's what forced prices up. And I'm concerned that the policies of the Victorian State Government and the Queensland State Government now, which has turned their back on increased infrastructure spending uh, as a result of you know, the decisions at the last election, and you've got a state like New South Wales which is going ahead with infrastructure spending in the way they are, that will improve housing affordability uh, for millions of New South Welsh when families, uh, but sadly in Victoria and Queensland, they may well pay the price uh, for the lack of infrastructure investment here. He said that his... Oh, but I'll ask oh, that's right. oh, well, look, I, I completely agree with the comments that the Minister has made, and I'd also make this further point. Uh, the Treasurer has already taken action on this issue of land supply. We know that this is predominantly a state government issue, and the Treasurer has called on all of the state Treasurers to come together to actually report back to the Federal Government on what action they can take to increase the supply of land to build more homes. We know that there is an under supply of homes in the country by around about 200,000 a year. Uh, that principally goes to why it does cost so much to be able to, to purchase a home. And we know that this is a very real issue for so many families, for so many parents who are worried about their children, grandparents who are worried about their grandchildren. It's a serious issue. There's no one silver bullet to this issue, but the states need to get on board, release more land so that more people can afford to own their own home. So would you agree that buying a home is as simple as getting a good job and having a good wage? It... Well, I don't think that is a fair characterisation of what the Treasurer said. Um, I think 
in my own discussions with the Treasurer over many years, not just recently, he has always demonstrated, I think, a, a deep concern about the challenges faced by Australian families, not just in my hometown of Sydney, but, but right across the country. I mean, at the moment we're seeing um, the reverse of the, of the situation in, in places like Perth and, and, and in Darwin. Now, some years ago, those were very hot housing markets, and, and housing markets can be cyclical, uh, as we all know. And, uh, and what we need to do at all times is, is, is pull every lever we can, uh, whether it's you know, creating strong job growth. I mean, one of the reasons why families have to go back to work, both parents, is to pay the mortgage. Mm. And in this budget, through our Jobs for Families package, we're making it easier for families to have the choice to go back to work to support uh, what are increasing costs of living, whether it's on the mortgage or whether it's on the rent or whether it's on other things. Uh, and so you've got to pull every lever you can. And the, the federal government, the Commonwealth government is doing that. Uh, and uh, we're, we're challenging also the states. And I must commend the New South Wales state government and Mike Baird for not just land release, but working right across the board on infrastructure provision, on planning reforms, all of these things mm. to ensure that we get more houses built. Mm. Are you concerned your children won't ever be able to afford a house in Sydney? Well, of course um, you want to ensure that every family has the opportunity to realise the choices that they want to make, whether that's to buy their own home or to uh, pursue a particular career path or realise whatever... Uh, dreams and visions they have for their family. Today we're hopefully realising the visions and dreams of families here in Malvern who want to ensure that their children continue to get the great support they've had in this special playgroup. And whether it's doing that or whether it's the economic policies of this government which are driving growth and putting people into work um, and giving families choice so they can go back to work, uh, they're the sorts of outcomes that I believe will give our children better opportunities in the future. But is that a concern for you, um, for your own children, that they wouldn't be able to afford a house? Well, my children are now five and seven, and uh, there's still <laughs> and my a long. Three weeks. <laughs> it's three weeks, so <laughs> we've got a bit. But it is it is every parent. I think it is every Australian's concern to, to want to be able to be in a position um, for their children to be able to realise their hopes and dreams, uh, whether that's buying a house or the job they want to be in or the education they want to pursue. And uh, we're working across all of those areas. Can I just quote for you directly from what Joe Hockey said yesterday? If you've got a good job, I'm quoting, and it pays good money and you have security in relation to the job, then you can go to the bank and you can borrow money and that's readily affordable. Do you agree with that? Well, all of what Joe Hockey has just said in terms of how you can gain access to housing finance is true. Um, it is The issue is how you can continue to keep up with the rising costs of being able to get into the market. And the reason those prices are going up is because there is an insufficient supply to meet the demand. Mm. And that is the driving problem of housing affordability, particularly in Sydney, but more broadly across the country uh, where that issue presents itself. Mm. And so it's a multifaceted response. And I think uh, to, con to confine it in the way that the commentary on the comments have been done, I, I think is, is unfair. Uh, to, uh, I think, the Treasurer's real appreciation of the issues here and his real concern for the families who are trying to get into the housing market. And, and I think, I think that's, that's absolutely right. And I think we're also, uh, you know, we also have to appreciate that mm. there are some state governments that are making it more difficult mm. for people to be able to afford their own home because they're increasing the cost of construction mm. of housing. Here in the state of Victoria, the Andrews government, one of the very first things that they did was abolish the compliance code. Mm. Uh, and that abolition of the compliance code is going to mean that it's going to cost an extra 200 million over the next three years in added additional construction costs. Now that gets passed on to the person who is ultimately going to be purchasing those homes and it's going to be passed on to the people who are going to be renting those homes. So it's, it's not right to create more barriers and, yeah. and there are some state governments doing a good job uh, like the New South Wales governments and there are some governments who are actually making it more difficult yeah. for people such as the Andrews government. But just back to Joe Hockey's questions, uh, sorry, uh, comments yesterday. Um, with unemployment, and this is something under your portfolio, at around 6%, isn't all of what he said easier said than done? Well, it's important that we try and encourage all Australians, young Australians, uh, those in, in families um, raising children, uh, those who are older Australians, where it's possible to get them into work and encourage them to be in work and stay in work, that's exactly what this budget does. That's what Joe Hockey's budget does. It tries to support the choices of Australians to be in work and to stay in work and to get in work. And people who are in that position are, are going to be in a better position 
uh, to be able to realise their aspirations of home ownership. Um, home ownership is something that is embedded in the psyche, I think, of, of Australians and has been for a long time. This is a good thing. This is a very good thing. And we, we're doing everything we can to ensure that housing is more affordable. And uh, as Kelly has said, that involves a, a strong partnership with the states and the removal of barriers, not putting barriers in place. And uh, so I think it's important to understand the broad uh, breadth of issues. Uh, they're associated with housing affordability in the country. Just on a uh, separate topic, do um, Australian authorities um, pay the uh, captain and crew of people smuggling boats to turn them back? Well, that's a matter you'd have to put to the Minister for Immigration. I no longer have responsibility for those matters, so I, I wouldn't be in a position. Um, I understand that the, the Minister himself has uh, made a comment on about that in the last 24 hours, and I'd refer to that comment. OK, so that was live from Malvern in Melbourne. The Social Services Minister holding a media conference there along with the local member Kelly O'Dwyer talking about ongoing funding for childcare centres and other social services. $40 million announced today going to 100 organisations. Also fa facing questions there over the comments of the Treasurer regarding housing affordability. Uh, we've heard uh, from a couple of different occasions this morning from the Treasurer on that as well. Now, we're also expecting a speech from the Prime Minister